Police, the public, and city agencies. The CAPS partnership that makes neighborhoods safer. I'm Peter Carl, and this is Chicago Crime Watch. It's a classic example of how community policing is supposed to work. A resident in the 15th district tells police about a serious problem on the block. An investigation ensues. The result? A dangerous felon taken off the streets. It's a very successful story in regards to CAPS. It just shows you that uh, citizens working together with the police department and other city services to solve a problem. Uh, if not totally solving the problem, eliminating the problem or reducing the frequency of the problem. Sergeant Glenn White is the community policing sergeant in the 15th district on the west side. During a beat 1524 meeting in August, a citizen told White about some concerns he had about a residence on the beat. The resident wanted to remain anonymous. He told me that at this particular location there was a, a subject, a male subject, uh, who had been in and out of the residence on a regular basis and the traffic pattern around the location had picked up in regards to vehicular traffic and foot traffic and the, the residents sort of suspected that it was uh, due to narcotic sales. The resident also told White pit bulls were running loose around the home. Armed with the information, White contacted the narcotics and gang investigation section. After uh, gathering the information from the community and the CAPS program from the 15th District uh, Gang Investigations Unit then uh, conducted our own investigation. We reached out to um, our resources that gather our intelligence in the 15th District and we conducted surveillance and observed um, a lot of the same information that the community was uh, giving to the CAPS program. Gang investigations set up surveillance for about two weeks. Once they had the information they needed, they obtained a search warrant for the home. Okay. The uh, search warrant ended in uh, positive results. We recovered three guns, over 100 grams of drugs, and 11 pit bulls. The target of the search warrant, Sean Jenkins, was on the scene at the time of the search and arrested. Jenkins, a convicted felon out on parole, was charged with weapons violations, possession of drugs, and possession of certain dogs by a felon. He is not charged with any dog fighting related crimes. However, dog court advocate Cynthia Bathurst says the case is an example of what they call a connected cycle of violence. The fact that a neighbor would notice that there was unusual activity bringing up uh, narcotics and perhaps guns, but also that they were watching uh, what they presume as, as see as pit bulls or dogs that are typically used in um, to fight or breed to fight shows how the connection of dog fighting, guns, gangs, and drugs is clear and it's clear to neighbors. Bathurst says the dog court advocates will be following the case closely and attending all court hearings. She says they go to support the community, the police officers, and the state's attorneys prosecuting the case as well as the dogs, who are also victims. We're there to make sure that the system knows that prosecuting these charges, making sure that we understand the connection between guns, gangs, drugs, and dog fighting is clear and that we use all the tools at our, at our disposal. So our advocates will make sure that this case um, moves forward. We'll certainly care that this felon is taken out of this neighborhood. Sergeant White says he will also be assigning court advocates from the 15th District to follow the case. This particular case, we want to have tracked through our court advocates to make sure that the convicted felon never hits the street again, carrying out the activities uh, that he car carried out while he was on parole, uh, wreaking, uh, wreaking havoc on the community over there where he resided. And concerned citizens over there expressed to me that it was a beautiful community and they wanted it, wanted it to remain that way. This case was wrapped up quickly. It took only two weeks from the time the citizens brought the issue up anonymously at the beat meeting to a search warrant executed. Police say it's important for people to let them know when they see things out of the ordinary on their block. And I tell all the residents that uh, I want to assure you that, that the information that you give me will be held in the strictest of confidence. Uh, the information I act upon, uh, what I do with it is based solely myself and the police department as to what we do with the information. 
uh, your identity is never exposed. This story provides a great reminder. If you have information about problems on your block, attend your beat meetings, talk to police, and know that you can share information and remain anonymous. The life and sacrifice of Chicago police officer Richard Francis will never be forgotten. Officer Francis was on patrol in early July when he was fatally shot in the line of duty. Even before Officer Francis was a good cop, he was a good man, he was a good husband, he was a good father, a good friend, and a good neighbor. Richard was truly remarkable in all aspects of his life. He placed the city's safety and security before his own, helping others in their most desperate hours of need. As a lasting memorial to his service and sacrifice, the police star of Officer Francis was enshrined in the superintendent's honored star case. That's it from the Crime Watch News Team. I'm Peter Carl. Thanks for watching.